morning and welcome to you all. And we welcome our local preacher, Sheila Gent, who's leading our service this morning. Uh, the only notice I've got that's, that's wrong on the notice sheet is that GB uh, were going to originally be doing a beetle drive, but unfortunately uh, we won't be doing it this, this Wednesday. It'll be postponed till probably next term. Okay, half term, should I say. We'll say a little prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. I ask that you would guide, guide our path today and more specifically, our thoughts, words, and actions. Please be with us throughout the day and help us to navigate whatever comes our way. More importantly, help us to reflect and live out our lives in a way that is honouring you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's good to worship together this morning. The psalmist said, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. And we sing together, Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Number 20. And so we pray. O oh Lord, we lift up our hearts and minds and we bless your holy name. For you have created all things and your glory is seen in the heavens and on the earth. We thank you for the bountiful provision and for your love that goes before us. May this time enable us to walk humbly and to be mindful of your covenant with us. Forgive us, Lord, for words that we have said and deeds done that have been perhaps selfish or inconsiderate, hurtful to others. But we thank you for the mercies that are new each day and that abound about us and clean and cleanse us in Jesus' name. We pray that you will be with us now, that we might know your presence and we truly worship you. We say ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we say together the words that Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we sing together number 407, I think. Hear the call of the kingdom. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and reading from verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. So he took some soil from the ground and formed all the animals and all the birds. Then he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And that is how they all got their names. So the man named all the birds and all the animals, but not one of them was a suitable companion to help him. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the flesh. He formed a woman out of the rib and brought her to him. 
Then the man said, At last, here is one of my own kind, bone taken from my bone and flesh from my flesh. Woman is her name because she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife. And they became one. The man and the woman were both naked, but they were not embarrassed. Thank you for sharing those words of scripture with us. And our next reading is Psalm 8, and we'll listen to it. O Lord, our God, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. It is sung by children and babies. You are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky, which you have made, at the moon and the stars, which you have set in their places, what is man that you think of him? Mere man? that you care for him. Yet you made him inferior only to yourself. You crowned him with the glory and honor. You appointed him ruler over everything you made. You placed him over all creation, sheep and cattle and the wild animals too, the birds and the fish and the creatures of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Thank you for sharing God's word. We're going to sing 615, Let Love Be Real. It's St. Mark, chapter 10, starting to read at verse 2. Jesus teaches about divorce. When Jesus left that place and went to the province of Judea and crossed the river Jordan, crowds came flocking to him again, and he taught them as he always did. Some Pharisees came to him and tried to trap him. Tell us, they asked, does our law a man allow a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered with a question. What law did Moses give? Their answer was, Moses gave permission for a man to write a divorce notice and sent his wife away. Jesus said to them, Moses wrote this law for you because you are so hard to teach. But in the beginning, at the time of creation, God made them male and female, as the scripture says. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife and the two will become one so they are no longer two but one man must not separate them what God has joined together when they went back to the house the disciples asked Jesus about this matter thanks be to God for his word Thank you once more for sharing God's word with us. I think one of the main messages that comes from that reading is the need to shepherd our children and to shepherd them towards Jesus. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, I pray that you will take the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts, and let them rise acceptable to you. Lord God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will not enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Can you imagine that scene? Possibly on a hillside. You can imagine the children wanting to crowd around him and the love that he must have felt for each of them. Tremendous words of wisdom, and yet so wonderful, so wise, so warm. So, Jesus, just how we possibly imagine him to be. So let's start at the beginning. Right in the very beginning, we are reminded today, too, was God in all his majesty. And there is one truth that is ever sure, always available always near, always there for each one of us. And we're better to start anyway, no matter what we're doing. We need to start right at the beginning, whether it's of life, a task, a problem, a meal, and so it was with time with time itself in the beginning as Christians we believe there was God so why do you think this was so important does being a Christian make a difference I assume you do and why do you think it's that way. In one phrase, I would say, it's bonds of love. Jesus said, I promise you that you cannot get into the kingdom of God unless you accept it the way a child does. We all enjoy the com company of children. Well, I think we do. Most of the time, anyway. The joy that they bring, that spark of mischief, and that unquestionable love. Jesus said, people who are like these little children belong to the kingdom of God. He wanted his disciples to understand that the kingdom of God is founded on bonds of love. And John 1 verse 19 said, We love because God loved us first. We, like children, respond to the warmth of his love. His love for us. Jesus taught us that if we love God and others, we would be obeying the two most important commandments of the law. Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that the kingdom of God is founded on bonds of love. And 1 John 1, 19 said, we love because God loved us first. 
In fact, in his first letter, John speaks of love as the key to knowing God. And the more I thought about this topic, agonized about it, aggravated David with it, I discovered how much emphasis Jesus, the disciples, particularly John, put on this concept, this knowledge of love. Listen to this. We love because God loved us first. And in 1 John 1, love comes from God, and when we love each other, it shows we have been given new life. God is love. And anyone who doesn't love others has never known him, has never known God. God showed his love for us when he sent his only son into the world to give us life. Didn't he say, dear friends, since God loved us this much, we must love each other. The writer to the Hebrews, this message, when he underscores this message about our place in God's family as brothers and sisters of Jesus, Jesus and the people, he makes holy all who belong to that same family. So belonging to the family of Jesus has got an aura about it the aura of love. And that is why we are not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. The psalmist wonders why God cares for us when he compares the size of human beings to the visible universe. How can God love us when we look at the size and magnitude of the task that he undertakes day by day. He said, I often think of the heavens your hands have made. And then I ask, why did you come for us? Now we live right at the top of a hill. On a clear night, we can often think of the wonder of creation. We get called to the window or draw to the window to see a beautiful moon or sunset. And we can then think of the wonder of creation, the heavens truly reflecting the awesome creation of a mighty and wonderful God. And then sometimes I'll think of a time when David and I have sat on the cliff top in Unstanton and watch the sun setting over the sea. And if we're very fortunate, an image of a cross appears. All shadows, and yet wonderful, because it reminds us of that love of Jesus for each one of us on Calvary. And God's way of saying clearly to each of us, Collectively, individually, I love you. Follow me. But it's a choice, isn't it? And the choice is ours. Individual, necessary, important, essential. The writer to Genesis suggests that God cares because we are made in God's image, a part of God's creation. We are beloved. We're trusted to nurture love in and for all creation. And in so doing, we partner God in creating the right conditions so that all may thrive 
and reach their full potential within God's plan for our common good. Alan Crouch read the, wrote this. Eternal God, your love tremendous glory cascades through life in overflowing grace to all creation, meaning in the story of love evolving, love from time and space. The thing that stands out for me in all this is basically the phrase that says bonds of love. Jesus said I promise you that you cannot get into the kingdom of God unless you accept it the way a child did. But he gave us the choice. I love you Come to me, but the choice is yours. Amen. Let us build a house, number 409. David will now lead us in our prayer. In the book of the Revelation of St. John the Divine, in chapter 8, we read these words. There was silence in heaven for half an hour while God heard the prayers of his people. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, who looks upon each of us in your divine mercy and grace and calls us to commune with you as Moses spoke with you as a man talks with his friend at the tent of meeting so we meet here to bring our prayers and petitions and rejoice in the knowledge of a God that neither slumbers nor sleeps we remember this troubled world in which we see so much hatred so much anger so much mistrust all those elements which are at variance to that love of which has been spoken of and we commend to you all those that are displaced all those that rattle the sabers of war, all those supposed leaders of the nations that seek to bring their vain ideologies and their alien religions to dominate others. May your Holy Spirit, as it always done, challenge the hearts of the leaders of the nations and all those that are at variance to your will that they may turn again and reflect on the wonder of your grace and the way of the eternal kingdom. The spear shall be turned into the plowshare and the children of men shall learn of war no more. We commend to you the leaders of our own nation and pray that in these new days they may seek your guidance given wisdom and understanding may lead all our people in the way of peace and hope and of joy but above all that there may come a time when there shall be an acknowledgement to Christ in all their dealings and in the matters concerning each individual and on this ho homeless Sunday we commend to you all those that do not have a home and all those that live in houses sometimes together where it is not a home. We reflect in this community here at times when 
that youngish man sits in the doorway at the car park and we think that this is but just sort of a minimum matter and yet in our cities and towns there are those that are homeless in many cases because of the desire of the churches to build up their financial balances rather than to use it for your glory and for the care which it was given guide the leaders of our churches at all levels that they may respond to the needs that they see around us we commend to you all those in authority within this area from districts to ministers and all those that would seek to speak the prophetic word may it be that in these days it shall be as thus says the Lord in these days for a mighty outpouring of your spirit upon your people and that all may speak and live concerning your way we are very mindful Lord of so often intimate details and people that we know that are set aside in sickness and ill health in hospitals and institutions those that are physically and those that are mentally ill we praise you that you have given to so many excellence in research and medicine and also the love of those that we call carers rest your hand upon each one and we think of those that have quite recently perhaps names that we could bring that mourn the loss of loved ones comfort ye comfort ye my people saith the Lord when words are inadequate may your spirit rest upon them and may they know the comfort which only you can give and what about us Lord because we're a needy people so often we try and wrestle with the problems ourselves a problem rather than a prayer and so this morning again we come to rejoice in the wonder of your grace that you speak to each one of us in our own unique individual way in a way that draws us ever closer to you as we travel on in our pilgrimage and as the old hymn writer said a daily march a day's ne nearer home we pray that you will stay with us and that perhaps along the way people will look like the prophet of old Zephaniah and they will say we will go with you for we can see that God is with you grant in your mercy your power of your Holy Spirit upon our lives take our prayers and use them to your glory and may they be answered in only accordance with your will for we ask it in the precious name of Jesus our only Saviour and Redeemer Amen And we're going to sing together number 440, Amazing Grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring to you the gifts of this, your people, and pray that you will use them in this corner of your vineyard to bring precious souls to a knowledge and love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.